Howdy fishing freaks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for subscribing, thanks for being here and hitting those ding-dongs. I had some requests to do more catfishing videos after my last backpacking shore fishing adventure and I'm here to deliver for you. Catfish sure are tasty and I enjoy eating them. I'm sure a lot of you do too. And there's a lot of ways to catch the old catfish. You can give it a dangle with a rod and reel and catch it that way. You can go Hank Williams style and catch them on a trot line. Or you can stick your hand into a hole, which I've seen some giant snapping turtles uh, while bass fishing and they kind of give me nightmares. So I prefer not to do that method. Or you can gather up some bottles and run some jump lines. And that's the method I'm gonna be showing you today. Now the last time I did this, back before I got hardcore in bass fishing, me and my buddies would literally just use these jugs right here. This is a bleach jug, you can use you know, Coke bottles, anything like that. But since then there's been a lot of advancements and I've been looking at the interwebs and I've seen a ton of different ways to do these jug lines. And this is the most popular right here. This is using PVC pipe and pool noodles. There's a lot of advantages to this method that I can tell, but I've never run one of these. I've only run one of these. I'm gonna show you both. The reason I find this very interesting is because just about anybody can do this and it's fun. I mean, look at this thing. This is how simple it is. This is what you're using. You put a little weight on there, some snap swivels, and some line, and things like that. And then the next thing you know, you're putting some stinky stuff on there and you're coming up with a nice catfish surprise. So if you're looking to get into the jug line game, you're in luck because I'm getting into it. And I haven't done this in a while. I'm probably gonna make some mistakes, but I'm gonna fix them. I'm gonna walk through it with you. Let's get out there and let's see what you gotta do to make a jug line work. So here's what to keep in mind about this video, y'all. If I completely knew what I was doing, I would lay out all the materials that you would need, the exact proportions, display it all nice and cleanly for you, but I don't. Since this is a fishing channel and I normally do things in series and we learn together and it's multiple videos, learning process, you know, things change every year. It's like, man, this is an adaptation. Man, I didn't know that last year. I learned this from somebody. So I'm gonna try it on this first run. If something isn't working the best it can be, I'll go back, I'll make adaptations, and I'll show you that later. This ain't gonna be the only catfish video, y'all. LFG, OSG, and LFB, we gotta eat around here. Right now, I'm about to mix up some concrete in this bucket and pour it in some Dixie cups. This is firming up quick. All right, we're just gonna pour these bad boys out because I made a mistake. I told you guys I was gonna make mistakes. I needed some extra rocks here anyway. Let's try this again. Little learning lesson there. So when you get quick Crete and it says 20 minutes, it's Texas and it's 108 outside, make that about five. These little cups with the wires in them, those are gonna be our weights. Couple different types of jug lines. You can have free floating jug lines, which means those suckers can just float all around the lake. Free floating ones that don't have a heavy weight are set up a little bit differently and you, that's a more in the moment kind of deal. You gotta be watching those things. Fish can grab it, can take off. You never see your jug again. You gotta pay attention. The ones I'm gonna show you here today, you just let them sit in one spot. Go about your business for a couple hours, maybe even overnight, drink you a couple of frosty Coca-Cola's and then come back and your fish is going to be in the same spot. So that's what I like about these and you can put up to five hooks on them here in Texas, which means you have the chance of catching Cinco catfish hoes. For this first go, what I'm going to try is a braided nylon. I picked this up at an academy. It's called a uh, Pro Cat. Tensile strength, 120 pounds. I guess because it's rope, they say tensile instead of like, you know, pound test. For the sake of everyone's Normal fishing sanity, I'll just say 120 pound test. Number 15 and a quarter pound. To be honest with you, I don't know what that means. So in the past, how I've done these is basically just tie some loop knots on there and put some trot line clips. I'll show you those right now. These are trot line clips. I'll take one out of the package so you can see. Real handy, super convenient. So a trot line is where you run a line and you can tie between two logs, but it runs across like this. Jug lines are running like this. But what these clips allow you to do is quickly detach your leaders. It's a big chunk of metal. I never like that when I'm fishing. You know, fish can sense that, feel it. I'm convinced of it. The catfish, they got them barbels all over the face. The barbels are the whiskers. But the catfish barbels are great at sensing a lot of things in the water, similar to a shark. Uses their ampulla of Lorenzini to detect electrical senses and impulses in the water. Catfish are like freshwater sharks. However, they allow people to stick their hands in their face and get pulled out, so I don't know. I'm kind of stuck in a quadri on that one. But these clips, the main reason I'm not gonna use these going down the line is because I want my line to look like a drop shot. It's basically where your hook sticks straight out 
from your line a foot or two above a weight, your lure is dangling like this instead of dangling like this. Now, if I detach one of those clips that has another line to it, what happens is it's gonna have loose play right here with the clip and that thing's just gonna sink down. It's gonna be kinda dangling down here. But when I tie that loop knot, and I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second, don't worry. That knot right there is gonna allow me to then run a short monofilament strip of line out here, like 50 or 60 pound, or fluorocarbon. I could use fluorocarbon as well. Fluorocarbon actually might be better because it's stiffer. In my head, that's kind of what I'm thinking will help it stick out more. The more it sticks out, the easier the fish can grab it, sense it, detect it, and then not get tangled up and get off. In Texas, a lot of my lakes are 50 to 60 foot deep max, and then there's a thermocline, and it really kind of sits, depends on the year, the water levels and all that, but it can usually sit between 20 and 30 feet of water. So I'll make my lines more than 20 feet. I'll make them all the way out to 50 foot on some of them. But if I have my loops going all the way down in five foot increments, then I can just simply choose the loop that sits at the depth that I'm about to fish at. If I wanna put it in 20 feet, go to the fourth loop. And on the weight, I'll have an easily detachable trot line clip that allow me to adjust that depth if I need to. So this means if I'm fishing in 20 foot of water, I'm gonna get up to three baits on that jug line. Let me show you how to tie one of these simple loop knots and then we're gonna go all the way down the rope and I'll show you how the whole thing looks. All you gotta do is double over your line and then you're gonna take that and simply tie an overhand loop knot, just like this. You're gonna pull this long end and there you go. It's a simple, strong, and effective knot could also be used in a survival situation. So I'm about six feet tall. Five foot's about right there. So all I gotta do is let that knot go down to the bottom, right there, five foot, tie another loop. That easy. Time to make some leaders. So I'm gonna play around with some different leaders and see which ones I like best, the ones that are sticking out the most, the stiffest that I can still tie knots with basically. Honestly, I think anything over 25 pound test is gonna be pretty good. Especially when you're talking about pure fluorocarbon shock leader or saltwater style leader. I actually use that a lot in bass fishing and it's really strong, really dense, and it's good. So here I've got some 66 pound, I've got 34 pound. I know these are weird European style fluorocarbon, so. And then I got your traditional American special, 25 pound trilene big game. One of these is gonna do the trick. The hooks that I'm gonna be using are circle hooks. This is also made by Team Catfish. This is a five aught, I got 14 in this package. Now if you're not familiar with circle hooks, they are fantastic for keeping the fish on the line because how the heck are they gonna throw that thing? I mean, it's basically a circle that goes in the corner of their mouth and then it's almost impossible for them to come unhooked once they've been hooked on, th on this, unless they're pulling so hard that they're bending it out. I've had it happen on Goliath groupers, but that's a whole nother video. So with a circle hook, you really don't wanna set the hook. You just wanna kinda lightly pull or let the fish hook themselves, which is often what happens. If you've never heard of a snell knot, this is a great situation for it. I also use it in bass fishing on, on straight wire hooks, straight shank hooks that I'm trying to flip and get maximum penetration with. There's no bend in the shank, so this will work with a snell knot. Previously tied some of these up from a saltwater trip for stingrays. That's a snell. So the line wraps around the shank of the hook and then it goes up through the eye. Now this little tool right here, fantastic. A friend introduced me to this while carp fishing uh, probably 10 years ago and they're just outstanding for carp fishing and cat fishing. I even used to use them for Carolina rigs for bass fishing, where you can tie up multiple leaders at once. So if you're running jug lines, you can keep your, your rigs attached to this. If you're carp fishing or cat fishing and you break off, you just take your leader tied to a swivel, take the whole leader line, maybe you don't have a swivel on there, doesn't matter. It's got a little notch around there and you twist it around. So this is made by Tackle Buddy. Nobody's sponsoring this video today, but I'll tell you, this is an awesome tool I think you can find pretty useful if you're an avid fisherman. And I'll leave a link in the description if they still make them. They probably do. I'm gonna try some of the 66 pound leader because it looks really stiff. I don't want it to be too long. I want it to be kind of short and stiff so it's gonna stay up. You want it to lay flat. Ugh, pull it tight. You know, it's just straight up on the shank. So it's like 100% strength right there close to the eye. If you really wanna learn how to tie a snail, let me know in the comments. I'll do a video just about it or maybe do it on a live stream or something like that. 
um, and, and kind of give you a better camera angle and everything like that. It's, it's effective for multiple different species, but definitely in saltwater, catfish, carp, uh, and flipping for bass. In the other end, we're gonna tie ourselves another one of those loop knots. I'm gonna say eight to 12 inches. Cut that tag end. And that right there is uh, one of our leader lines. So let me show you how that works. So we got our bright yellow chartreuse main line here. You take your leader line, take the loop end that you made, go through that loop. Then you take your hook end, bring it through that loop. And it's gonna catch a little bit on that knot. You just work it through there. And then you just pull those together like that. Now that's really easy to get out. So that's tight right now, but if I want to back that out, boom, there it is. This is my first attempt at doing it this way instead of using the trot line clip. So hopefully that works out right there. So that's it. I got to make a bunch more of those to put on the rope and then we're going to attach it to the jug and I'll show you that system. Can't think of a better excuse to get in the pool on a 108 degree day than to test some jug lines. The needles are fancy and fun. We're going to get to that in a second, but let's not forget about the jug. This thing's caught a lot of catfish y'all. I've got a simple trot line clip put it on my main loop, the top loop. These are quick disconnects. Whatever you're wanting to connect needs to go up in there. You slide it through here and then pinch it shut, then it's connected. So when it's time to connect this to the jug, just slide it through here, slide it through, then that's connected. And that's why people use it on trot lines. So they can just go in and just connect, disconnect, got the fish, sling them in. That way they're not tangling with the whole rope. Is that enough wrapping and jugging in your face right now? That right there will do. But it won't do by the state of Texas standards. And you'd have to check your, your local listings. That sounds very official. I wish you just walked through the frame. I don't think I would do that. What are you doing, sweetheart? They definitely saw you. You might as well come out now. Do you have any idea what we're talking about? I want you to look at just what's going on here. Let the fishing freaks know. What do you think that is right there? Is this a way to organize your hooks? That's exactly what it is. Right. Your, your leader lines more. Uh, specifically, but yes. I see a laundry detergent. Laundry detergent, that came from you. It did, I that just had threw a, that away. Yeah, she threw it away about two other times. <laughs> I kept taking it out and she was like, is that jug just magically <laughs> appearing? Or is the, what's going on? Every time that I kept seeing this out, I thought I was going insane. I was digging it out of the trash because she didn't know that I was building this. So anyway, I'm building some jug lines. Good. I would love another one of these if you have one. Fabric softener is almost out, does that work? Yes. Okay. That'll work too. Anything that looks like this. You're welcome. We're gonna get some catfish for you and Emery. Alright. Give you give you some protein. Yum. Alright, love you. Love you too. Anyways, these make great jug lines for the state of Texas because it's already white. So that's one of the legal things you gotta do. And the other thing is you gotta put your information on it. You can't just be out there just going anonymous jug line. Now if you don't have a white jug, you can paint it white. But if you use orange, that means it's for commercial use. Now technically, you're supposed to put a game tag on this. What that means is, for some systems, you're using an actual plate, a tag plate. What you can also do is just write it on the white jug. That says your name, your address, and the date that you put it out. That's the most important thing. So when you're jug lining, you do not want to let this thing sit for days. You know, I would never let this sit for more than overnight. I think we all know what happens to fish when they're dead for a long time. They smell like turds and they're not good to eat. Now the thing you gotta remember, if you're gonna use this multiple times, is you gotta be able to scratch that date out and put another one on there. Now, unless you're a frequent mover or name changer, that's gonna stay the same. What I'm gonna do is put my name and address on here on the jug and then put it on a piece of tape, put the date. That way I can just peel it off and use a piece of new tape every time. There's a daggum spider in my microphone. Get out of there, dude. Living at the treehouse. Never know. Get off. I think what I'm gonna do is, is wrap the rope separately on something that it's not just gonna get totally befuddled. Even though this is not the prettiest thing ever, it will get the job done. We've got the traditional jug out of the way. It's time to build one of those noodles. This noodle jug, I think the official name is a jug. It looks like a noodle, but noodling is a whole different thing. So the fun time noodle jug is much more complicated. We have rebar, we have PVC pipe, we have foam noodles, and we also have to drill a few holes. Hang tight, I'm gonna walk you through it, but I also don't know what I'm doing, so um, it ought to be interesting. You need about two foot of this PVC. You're gonna cut out about half that for your noodle. You're going to cap that. You're gonna screw a, uh, an eyelet in there and that is gonna be where you hang your line with all your leaders on it. This isn't the real thin stuff. I don't know which is better to be honest with you. The 40 
I think that has to do something with the thickness of the pipe. Regardless, what you want to happen is for this rebar or weight, whatever you want to use, you could use some, you know, cylinder lead if you had it. You want that to be able to go in there easily. Slide up and down and I'll show you why. So we're gonna cut this to nine inches. Okay, doesn't really have to be exact. Literally just gonna use a knife for this part. Now I know that doesn't seem like much. It takes a lot to pull these things down and consistently hold it down. I'm gonna say a catfish up to 30, 40 pounds is gonna have a really hard time trying to pull this thing under. Now that's gonna go on our PVC, like so. It's gonna slide and move around. I'm not really sure if that's good or not. I also have some three quarter inch PVC I could put in here that would firm it up a little bit. In fact, what we may do is to do one three quarter and then a one half and then see which one works better. Here comes the hard part, cutting the rebar. I wasn't exactly sure if I had the right tool, still not, but I went over to LFD's house and I got a hacksaw and I can't remember if I've got the right metal hacking teeth on it or the wood hacking teeth. It's kind of rubbed off over time, so we're about to see. I'm gonna clamp that down. If you don't have a set of clamps like this, I found them to be extremely useful. Except that one is not big enough. This one's freaking huge. Well, I'm still getting teeth, so I guess it's gonna work. Oh yeah. Here we go. When we cap our PVC, which I'm gonna probably have to use some glue on there. I don't know, that might be tight enough. Smash that on there, <laughs> there we go. Then we put this in there. Ooh. So here's the whole point of that deal. Isn't that fun? So essentially what we have made here is a giant weighted bobber. If you guys have ever used bobbers that have a little lead on the bottom, you know, that's to keep that thing upright. Of course, we don't want it upright all the time, when we first lay this thing in the water, it should lay flat, experimentally. On this end is gonna be where our, uh, our line tie is, and then we're gonna have our rope. So when a fish pulls on it, it'll go down, and then this should float up, and then this is the weighted end. So you basically know you got a fish. It's like those flags for ice fishing. Remember that one time where I fell and busted the back of my head, ice fishing with John and Rob? using those things. We gotta drill ourselves a little bit of a hole now. Don't get too worried. It's not gonna get too crazy. Hooks or gotchos. I think I went a little overboard on these size-wise. I, I think that's a little excessive. These are screw eyes. They're enclosed. I can screw them into the ends and then tie a rope on there. Just match you up a drill bit that's kind of similar. This is a 332nd that I'm gonna use. Then we're gonna take our caps. Now make sure you get the right fitting cap. So if you get half inch PVC, Get half inch caps. Put our drill bit in here. Now we just need to put that screw eye in the hole. Doesn't have to be perfect. I recommend getting a short screw eye if you can. It's an inch and five eighths. Your rebar isn't going and slamming into that deal and then it might knock it out. So then you gotta cap that up. And uh, wow, you're done. That foam just looks kind of small for that though, to be quite honest with you guys. I might switch up and put a, a bigger piece of foam on there. I honestly thought that was gonna take a lot longer. That probably took me 10 minutes with filming everything. If you wanted to go to town and make you a bunch of these, which maybe you do, you could get it done in a night, you know? Maybe with a cold frosty one or two. One last thing that I'll do is put construction adhesive on the ends. Now you could use PVC glue. Actually, it's probably the best thing to do since it's PVC. Since I do so many home projects nowadays, fix ups around the house, it's just really easy for me to use the construction glue that has already been opened and it's been out. Construction glue works on just about everything. Put that on there. Yeah, yeah I'm not even worried about the other one. If I can't pull it off like that, I'm not worried about it. But this one's gonna be the end fish pulling on. If I get a 50 pounder, I wanna make sure I get it. The only thing left to do with this is to mark it with our personal information. I think this is actually supposed to be white foam. White foam is probably the best thing you can use because I know for sure that is gonna be illegal. And uh, we don't wanna be breaking law now here. But you could put some white duct tape on it or spray paint it white or put some gray duct tape on it and paint that white. I mean, there's multiple options. Main point is, it needs to be white. I haven't forgot about our weights. Instead of going to the store and buying some expensive lead sinkers, I opted to use the cement method. Saw this on a YouTube video somewhere, one of the uh, the jug liners. Thought it was a pretty good idea. So, oh, there we go. Push up from the bottom. That's what a finished weight looks like. I mean, if you lose one of these, big deal. 
I went ahead and built me a three quarter inch one as well, guys, and used a little bit more foam on there so we can see what that's like. And it does fit a lot more snug, so that is nice. Family dinner night, we're gonna go over there. We're gonna spend a little time with the fam. And I figured I'd go to their pool and test out these noodles and see what's going on. <laughs> Sorry, I called them noodles. They're jugs, but they have noodles on them. Just got out of the pool, it's 111. It's getting a little overheated, I had to take a dip. They've got nine hooks and leaders on here. So I've got three different jug lines. I made a three quarter pipe, I made a half pipe, and I made, well, the jug. The nice thing about having this, guys, it's so much better. You just wrap it around here. And this one goes out to about 30 feet. I'll just stick that there. What I actually need to do is put this pin on the loop. Then I've got my weight. There we go. All right, let's drop it in. Hook and the weight on now. Let's drop it in the pool and see what happens. So I think it's important to have the pool noodle slid up on this other side. If that doesn't happen, then we're gonna have something like that. That's completely the wrong way. I'm probably gonna have to stick that in place where that, that's gonna stay there. But the weight is on that end. A little piece of rebar is on that end. So let's see, theoretically, if something bit, what would happen. There it goes. There we go. That's working. It's gonna dangle about two inches off that rope. That angle looks like it's touching. It's not. It's not sticking out quite as much as I want it to. That's not terrible. So if y'all want to tune in to the next phase, which is basically getting some kitties on these bad boys, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit the ding dongs for all the notifications. If you're digging this, go ahead and hit the like button, y'all. I can't wait to see you back here and get some lives wet. See you soon. Thank you.